Today I'm looking at cocktails I call DISCO COCKTAILS! <laughs> Look, people have been asking me about disco cocktails for a while. My mentor Rodney did some disco cocktails on here a long time ago, but like 12 people watched that episode, so I guess I gotta do them again. It says it's done. But this time it's me. This is the real me that you're finally getting to see after all these years on HGD. People think that I'm a lumberjack hipster in a denim apron, but no, no, no. That is an affectation I created, a character I created for the YouTube. This is the real me. Let's get into our first Disco cocktail. It's the Godfather. It's equal parts amaretto and blended scotch. We got De Amore amaretto here. Whoa, hey baby. Hope I don't split my pants. <laughs> Happily, a leisure suit is a very stretchy material. If you know what I'm saying. One and a half ounces of amaretto. Johnny Walker Black Label. That's the whole drink. It's equal parts blended scotch and amaretto. So let's put some ice in there and stir it up. I've never heard anything good about this drink. I've never had it. I've had somebody in my comments kind of like, when are you gonna make a Godfather? Come on, when are you gonna do the Godfather? It's my favorite drink and I've just, you know, I've never done it. Godfather guy, it's for you. Strain away. Oh yeah. Here we go, Godfather. Oh my God, nobody likes that drink. It's like taking a bag of Halloween candy and drinking it. If you wanna eat like a melted down Almond Joy Bar, which is what I think I'm getting off of that, that is what it tastes like to me. It would throw my sugar off and I would fall asleep, I think. It needs something else going on. Honestly, I would bet that a couple dashes of Angostura bitters even, it's not gonna fix the sweetness because that's in there, is at the very least gonna add another dimension to this drink. Yeah, but not really, it's not helping it. I mean, ugh. Ugh. oh man. Right after this, I'm gonna make a Harvey wall banger. Let's do a Harvey wall banger, baby. Sponsor time. Hey Meredith, did you know that Magic Spoon is serial reinvented? It's bringing back my childhood. And they happen to be the sponsor of this episode. So thank you, Magic Spoon. And they sent me this box that says Open Sesame. And it's very mysterious. What could possibly... <gasps> Look at this silicon bowl they sent me. And Spoon, perchance to eat cereal with? Magic Spoon has zero grams of sugar and 13 to 14 grams of protein and only four net grams of carbs in each serving. They're only 140 calories per serving. They are also keto friendly, gluten free, grain free, soy free, and low carb. I've been standing here eating this cereal, making you very jealous, I am sure. So why don't you click the link below and get your own magic spoon? You can build your very own variety box and use my code, which is appearing on screen right before your very eyes, for $5 off. And you can choose from the best selling cocoa, fruity, frosted, peanut butter, cookies and cream, maple waffle, blueberry muffin, and cinnamon roll. But wait! Magic Spoon is now adding Honey Nut to their permanent collection, so be sure to add Honey Nut to your custom box and try it out. Magic Spoon is so confident in their product, it is backed by a 100% happiness guarantee. So if you don't like it for any reason, they're gonna refund your money without any questions. If you happen to be a Canadian or a British fan of the show, hello, thank you very much. Uh, but Magic Spoon is now shipping to Canada and the United Kingdom. That's magic. I don't know anything about this drink. I got no history for you. I'm just tasting them, telling you if they're any good. Harvey Wallbanger, here we go. Three ounces of orange juice. Half an ounce of Galliano. Boy, that's an annoying bottle. Look at that stuff. Look how tall that is. It's really possible. Like, I don't think I've had most of these drinks, so it's possible. Like, I've never had a Harvey Wallbanger. It might be a good drink. I don't know. An ounce and a quarter of vodka. Good Lord. And here we go. The Harvey Wallbanger. I garnish that with an orange slice. <laughs> Tip-toe through the turnips. 
There it is, the Harvey Wall Banger. Not actually a terrible looking drink, to be honest. I would have bought a bang the bang boogie boogie doogie da boogie goo. Oh man! Who thought putting orange juice and fennel together was a good idea? Wow! Oh, I'm gonna blow a cravat over here. This is awful. Is that what Galliano tastes like? What the hell? Fennel orangeade. Oi. I don't like it. Drinking my poison. The only way to make people like this drink is to gaslight them. I like licorice. I like lemonade. I like orange juice, whatever. I don't want licorice in my orange juice. This was invented because somebody had these bottles and they needed to get rid of them. And they gave it a name. Harvey Wallbang! It's a horrible drink. Yeah, that's really bad. <laughs> how, how do you make out with someone after drinking that? It makes my mouth feel dirty. Your mouth would also be numb from the cocaine. <laughs> that's true. Good point. Good point. <laughs> this, that's what it is. <laughs> This is a cocktail that pairs with cocaine and cigarettes. You won't be able to taste it or experience it at all. You're like, I don't give a shit. I don't give a shit. I think that might be true. I never even thought about that. Like, between the lead poisoning, the cocaine, and the cigarettes, like, could people taste anything? That's why these are awful. They had no taste buds. We cracked the code. That's why grandma put green beans in the jello. My grandmother did. She made, you know, you've seen the, the jello with like the fruit salad in it? Mm -hmm. She said it's green, we just put green beans in there. We'd have green beans. <laughs> <laughs> Up next, we're gonna make a Midori Sour. I don't wanna, but I gotta. Oh boy. Midori Sour, we're back. Let's make a Midori Sour. I'm gonna need my shaky. I gotta just tone it down a little bit. I'm sure I'm losing the audience with all these antics. A few commenters keep asking me to go back to classic cocktail videos where I just make the cocktails. I'm just making the cocktails. That's all I'm doing in this episode. All right, we need lemon juice and a lime juice. And also I gotta say too, these recipes that I threw together for this list, I think a lot of these are like elevated disco cocktails because I don't think a Midori Sour is traditionally made with fresh lemon and lime juice. I think it's made with some sweet and sour. So half an ounce of lemon, boop. Half an ounce of lime juice. One ounce of Midori. Midori means green in Japanese. Relatively new product when this drink became popular. And boy, is it green. It's a melon flavored liqueur. And I need an ounce of vodka. We're using Sky, because it's what we had. Vodka's vodka, for the most part. Especially when you're talking about cocktails, it doesn't matter. I'm gonna put it into a highball. Okay, there's our Ecto Cooler, club soda. Here we go. Uh, this is a Midori Sour. Woo! <sighs> sour certainly describes that drink. That is tart. Kind of like drinking battery acid. Uh, it's just sour and kind of aggressive and annoying about it. It's, you can't pick out any flavors. Take Sour Patch Kids, scrape the sour parts off, keep like a tiny amount of their sweetness, melt it down and drink it. That's what this is. If I pour this through a lens of cocaine and cigarettes, I, I feel alive. The aggressive battery acid hellscape of it makes me feel like uh, maybe my heart's still beating. After this, we're gonna make another cocktail on how to drink does disco cocktails. Woo! There are many like eras to Greg. From 19 to 22, I was kind of bumming around, working odd jobs and finding my way, but I was still hanging out with my old friends. Mm -hmm. They were all in college and I was cocktail guy back then, but I unreliably had internet access and I was not in a major metropolitan area. I had very limited information and I was not plugged yet into the cocktail renaissance that was going on. So I would make like tequila sunrises for people and be like, chick dada! My friends would be throwing a party, they'd be like, I'm bringing beers, bring beer. I mean, I'd tell people like, hey, listen, you guys want beer, bring beer. I'm providing some alcohol, I'm gonna make cocktails. What are you making, Greg? We're making tequila sunrises, white Russians, and mudslides. 
Because, <laughs> you know, those were the days. It's about the last time I had, like, a, like, I just made and had a tequila sunrise. To make this drink, we actually build it in the glass. I'm gonna use this rinky dink spear, it's broken half. Um, that's perfect for this drink. A half an ounce of grenadine, specifically wanna be using Rose's grenadine, not that good fancy stuff. Oh, now I wanna add two ounces of tequila. And yes, I am pouring this all kinds of out of order, but that's because I want it to wind up with a certain specific particular look. And now I wanna add about four ounces of orange juice, really kinda of just fill it up with orange juice. We wanna garnish that with an orange slice. Open up the window. Let some air into the room. Think I'm gonna choke from the smell of stale perfume. Pour some whiskey in your water, some sugar in your tea. What's all these crazy questions you asking me? Mama told me not to come, not to come, not to come. Mama told me not to come, not to come. This drink really, truly makes me think of Three Dog Night. So here's the thing, you saw me build this drink. I mixed it not at all. The idea, and I kind of failed, I guess, is to get this like gradation from orange to red. So it looks like a sunrise. And then we filled it up with orange juice. And you know what? It tastes like nothing. Honestly, it's not even that bad. It's not that far out of whack. It tastes like a little tequila and orange juice. I feel like it's really saying something when the best drink of the, of the evening so far is a tequila sunrise. Two thoughts. Of these, it's the best. The second thought was you could fix it, you could improve it. And then I thought about how you'd improve it and I was like, you would turn it into a margarita. That's what would happen. Therefore, it belongs in the past. Up next, we're making another disco cocktail. It's called the pink squirrel. Whoa. Have you ever been in a men's room? Yes. Do you know the smell of a urinal cake? Like yes. a, a row of urinals? Come over here, Meredith. This is the residue after shaking a uh, Midori sour. Close your eyes and smell that. And tell me you're not on a road trip in the men's room. <laughs> <laughs> it's the smell of urinals. Yes. Uh, you ever wonder why this drink is called a pink squirrel? I, I know a lot of euphemisms. Is a pink squirrel like a euphemism? I feel like it's gotta be dirty. <laughs> so anyway, we start with three quarters of an ounce of creme de noya. Creme de Noya is like an alternative to amaretto, by the way. It's a sweeter amaretto. Now I want three quarters of an ounce of white creme de cacao. One and a half ounces of heavy cream is what my notes say. That seems like a lot, but I'm gonna give it a shot. Okay, here we go. Straining this into my little Nicky Nori glass. Where's the pink? I guess it's lightly pink. It says I should now garnish it with fresh grated nutmeg. Here we go, pink squirrel with fresh nutmeg, which is way better than you would have gotten in the 70s, I think. Now let's see how this is. Keeping in mind that this is a dessert drink, this is ice cream. I mean, that's delicious. No, that, 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 that's actually delicious. I want a milkshake that tastes exactly like that, but I don't want a cocktail that tastes like that. There, I can't imagine being like, oh, we got a lovely evening, so uh, dinner was wonderful. Did you enjoy your Alaskan king crab legs? I did, I had a wonderful curry, ooh, yes. The wine with dinner was divine. Wanna come back up to my place, my conversation pit for a nightcap? I do. What are we serving? Pink squirrels. Cause that's exactly what that drink, that's the moment that drink is for, I think. That will, um, unless you're like, have a puke fetish. No, I mean like, I'm just, I, I can't imagine wanting a, a cocktail, an alcoholic beverage, but also a glass of melted ice cream. But it is a delicious milkshake. That's what that is. It's just, there's no reason for there to be alcohol in here. It's delicious though, otherwise. It's like nutty and it has some really fun little turns and twists in it. I just don't need it to be alcohol. Genuinely actually quite good as, as a confection, as a dessert, as a treat. Oh yeah, I think that gives it like a brightness that ice cream doesn't normally have. Maybe. Well, if that's true, then then I guess that's what it is. That's dessert for grown-ups, but that's dessert. Oh yeah, Alamo Draft House serves a lot of boozy milkshakes. Some of them are very like- Boozy. They hit you hard when they hit Knock you. Knock you on your butt. Yeah. 
Maybe that's what y'all want. Sorry. Yeah, I mean, I think you could throw rum in there, kind of a heavy Demerara rum, and it would just present as a little extra caramel note, and you'd never know it was in there, and you'd love it. What do you got from rum over there? Uh, it's been a while since we've taken out the old Smith and Cross. No, 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 that's too much What funk. about Appleton Estate? Perfect. Perfect. Bring me that. I want to see something here. One, it's going to knock the uh, proof way up on this drink. Okay, here we go with a little extra rum. It's a little pinker now, too. That's a little off balance, but I wasn't entirely wrong. I kind of think about just doing the show in this outfit forever. Dude, this is like a Sears Levi's collaboration from the 70s. I got it, I had the original tags in it when I bought it off of Etsy. I think I love it. I think that's our next evolution of the show. Yeah. Right up next, we got the one more disco cocktail. Yeah, yeah. One more. Here we go. This is called the Golden Cadillac. I'm going to put it in a snifter because that feels really appropriate. Back to Galliano. I don't like this stuff. One and a half ounces of Galliano. One and a half ounces of white creme de cacao. That's another thing about a lot of these drinks is that like there's no base spirits at all. It's just sweet, creamy syrups. One and a half ounces of our heavy cream. Oof. I know. It really probably should be half and half, but this is what we got. So we're going to make do. Here we go. I'm gonna strain this into a snifter. It's the wrong glass, whatever, who cares? <laughs> it, it's the wrong glass, but it's the right glass in spirit. You know what I mean? That is a golden Cadillac. Ha <laughs> ha, boys. Whoa, I was about to say it's better than the last drink with Galliano on it, but it, I don't know, man, that's weird. If you were living on diet pills, cocaine, and cigarettes, and this was dinner. Because there's a lot of calories in there. Oh, man. <laughs> was there a Cadillac that had a hot tub in the back? Um, there have, yeah, not really specifically. I mean, it may have been built out of a Cadillac because all limousines were Cadillacs at one time, but like, it was a custom built limousine that has like 18 wheels in the back, too. It has so many axles, and they, yeah, there's like a little hot tub in the back. That's where I feel like you find this drink. Oh, yeah. Like in a ZZ Top music video? <laughs> Hells yeah. This is a ZZ Top cocktail. And now, I'm coming around on it because I like ZZ Top. <laughs> I've been shooting all day and now I'm a little bit ready to shoot from the here. This was six day glow, creamy, saccharine, sweet, mid-century, cocaine induced, cigarette inhibited disco cocktails. I don't feel great anymore because I've been drinking hell. I'll be back soon with another episode of HGD. In the meantime, if you're new to the show, I've been making it for some six years. There's a huge back catalog that you could be pouring through right now. And before your very eyes appearing, one, two, three, four episodes for you to choose from. Thank you so much again. Good night, good luck, stay safe out there, and I'll see you soon with another episode of HTD. I'm not gonna lie, I'm not gonna lie. These pants, these pants, these beautiful, I don't know what this material is. It's some kind of space age oil-based petroleum product, but boy howdy does it stretch and breathe. It's something else.